play well. Enjoy the game. So we're ready to go now. Jason Shaw, clear favourite. But what chance do you give Corey Jewell in this one, Ted? Well, I like Corey, great player, but I, well, I'm going to say I'm not going to give him a chance. Obviously, everybody has a chance, but Jason, you know. Jason is a prohibitive favorite here. He is super confident. He is flying sky high. He walked anyway, in anyway. here the other day on the first day, and he said, this is my house. He's in excellent shape. He's been going to a personal trainer for the last few months. He's been uh, practicing for eight hours a day, maybe even more. He's got his family with him. Uh, he is just in a good space right now. And that does not bode well for the rest of the field. Yeah, and he's got a couple of balls down there off the break. But has he got a shot in the one? Yeah, certainly looks like it can go in the side. It's been getting gradually harder for him as the rounds go by. He started off first match on this table against Marcus Weston of Germany, and he looked very nervous and was beaten 11-0. But Tom Stavley gave him more of a game. It was 11-5. And then earlier today against Hunter Lombardo, he got pushed to 11-7. So as the rounds go by, the heat has been turned up ever so slightly with each passing match on the defending champion. What's great about Jason is he's just so confident. It's fun to watch a guy like this who expects to win. And you can just see by his demeanor when he walks around the table. Some people may interpret that as cockiness. Uh, I just think that uh, you know, he, he has been a prodigy uh, even going back to his English eight ball days. And if you ever catch any videos online of him when he was a teenager, shooting some English eight ball. It's just, it's uh, out of sight how surreal the guy can pot the balls and in rapid fire succession. So he's always been very confident in his abilities. He's fun to watch. Yeah, he's from Glasgow, which is a, a real Q sports town. They've uh, produced a couple of recent world snooker champions as well, John Higgins and Graham Doss. And that part of the world would also be Quite a big place for darts as well, so uh, indoor games very big in the Glasgow area. And if you ever go there and experience the weather, Ted, you'll know why. <laughs> so Jason Shaw, break and run out there, got two balls down from the break, and it was plain sailing from there. So quickly into a 1-0 lead. And uh, Bustamante, a man you know well, Ted, going well here. Django Bustamante, these are two uh, veterans. Jeremy Jones, the vice captain of Team USA, was really, I think, the glue that uh, held that team together this year, or last year. What a great player, Francisco Bustamante, just an absolute legend in the game. People may be wondering, well, where's his famous sidekick, Efren Bata Reyes? Efren's semi-retired now. He still plays, but mostly invitational kind of stuff where he gets guaranteed money to show up and play for a week and put on exhibitions. Well, he's got that elder statesman status in the game now, doesn't he? That's, he's in the position to do just that sort of thing. And it was notable, you know, a lot of the players filled out a questionnaire before the tournament started for the purposes of media information. And they were all asked who their favorite nine ball player was, nearly all of them said Reyes. So here's Jason Shaw. Oh, wow. That, that is, if he can continue to do that, he'll be unbeatable. Yeah, much more of this, and Corey Joe can start to get very comfy in his seat because he could be spending quite a while there. All right, let's uh, 
Let's turn on the stopwatch. See how long this takes. Mika Imminen, who we saw a few minutes ago, is now 7-all with Alex Montpellier. Jason won this U.S. Open. The last time it was played was in October of 2017, and that's when, uh, after that, when Matcherm took over the event. So it wasn't held in 20. 18. This is what is called connect the dots pool. It's all laid out for you. All you got to do is fill in the blanks. And he's so dependable in these situations. Every player is susceptible to missing a surprising ball, an easy ball every now and then, but it's very rare with Jason Shaw these days. Generally, when he has a chance to run out, he does it. And so, Jason Shaw, two break and run outs, and he leads Corey Jewell 2-0. One minute and 40 seconds, and I think he was uh, taking his time on that one. Yeah, didn't even feel that long. Well, it's nothing more than what we expected, really, from Jason Shaw. Just seems to be totally in the zone, the right frame of mind. Looks really relaxed and comfortable. Very proud to be here as the defending champion in a tournament with so much history. And he loves the winner breaks format, as does uh, Shane Van Boning. It's nothing Jason enjoys more than parking his opponent in his chair. So Corey Duell. The only thing fortunate for him right now is it's a nice leather chair. Looks quite comfortable. Could we get a couple of those up here, do you think? We're spending <laughs> a lot of hours here, although maybe not in this match the way it started. Well, Jason Shaw is just itching to get on with this. Couple of balls down again. He's got to hope that one comes out, and it does. Just at the last second, it peeks out from behind the nine ball. And uh, this will be nice to watch Jason uh, attempt this shot. This very difficult shot. Long pot off the rail. Big distance between the object ball and the corner. it in the side look at that with position on the two and well Corey can get even more comfortable well the way things are going Michael uh, we've got about an hour. If this match isn't over, uh, this might be the last match, but I think this uh, match could be over in much less time than that, so we might actually get another match in here for you. Yeah, if, the, it, if this is uh, a quick finish, I think the, the plan is to try to get one more on, so we will see. It's a fluid situation. This is very fluid play 
from Jason Shaw. He has completely frozen out Corey Jewell so far. Three straight break and run outs. When this nine ball goes down. Jason Shaw in total control, leading by three racks to nil. And now we're going to hear from the woman who's in control of this event, Emily Fraser of Matchroom. She's with Tom. Day two of the US Open nine ball championship. And we have got Emily Fraser here from Matchroom Multisport. Talk a little bit more about the event, Emily, because this is the first time that, that Matchroom has done it uh, so far. Success? Yeah, um, obviously I'm a bit of a perfectionist. So for me, um, success is obviously very different. Uh, it has gone extremely well. We've had nothing but uh, very good reviews about it. Um, the players seem to be happy. Uh, everything that we were sort of concerned about, like scheduling, um, that seems to be sort of on point as well. Um, the logistics behind it have been extremely difficult. Uh, but overall, yeah, I'm really happy, to be honest. Tell us more about the logistics, because anyone can see that this isn't something that's just thrown together. I mean, look at how many tables there are for a start. Yes, obviously we're so used to this one table setup. We've got 33 tables in here and there's 256 players that we have to hunt down, find, find to obviously come and play a match. We've got, it's not like the usual tournaments where they have, you know, one referee per section of tables. We've got a score controller for every table. We've got um, a section referee for each section. And it's, there are so many people here that we have to manage as well as the players. So logistically, it has been extremely difficult, but we all love a challenge. So it's exciting. A match room are used to doing pool events with just the one table as well. So the fact that it's running so far, touch wood, smoothly, even better yeah of course it's fantastic and like we said normally we're used to the invitational events and you know we have 16 or 24 players that come into our events that we invite this time it's totally different you know they're paying a thousand dollar entry which is big money for paul they're putting their trust into us to deliver a huge successful tournament and i think we have and uh confidently we said that we were going to um, and everyone seems really pleased and happy but it's been a challenge <laughs> and from the last 16 so the last three days of the tournament we're actually in a different well different venue i suppose yeah we only actually had one day to build this entire uh, venue in here so obviously in the convention center we've got one big air wall across and the room that we're in at the moment we have our 33 tables uh, come Wednesday, we actually move next door and at the moment, because obviously we go through the day, we have to build everything overnight to stop any noise from uh, happening coming through the games. So we actually move next door, we've got the usual match room, one table where you'll probably find that the last three days I'll be a lot more in my comfort zone, so I'll sort of relax <laughs> a little bit. Um, but yeah, it'll be the one table, um, bleacher seating in there, a little bit different to what people are used to. We're trying to bring in new things into our events to you know, keep it fresh, keep the DJ in because everyone loves the music. Um, so yeah, it's, it's exciting. Well, one more question before we get back to the commentators for the, this Jason Shaw Corey Jewel game. Mm -hmm. uh, these first th three days, as everyone knows, because they're watching it now on Facebook Live. Tell us a bit more about that. Yeah, I think a lot of the pool events um, that people have staged, obviously, there's not a lot of money in pool. Um, and there's obviously always pay per view um, live streams. And I think this is the first time that we've actually sat down and gone, right, here's a free live stream for everyone. Okay, sure, not everyone has Facebook, but the viewerships that we've been getting, and they've been just growing day by day, hour by hour. Normally, you know, we hit the big numbers and we maintain that throughout the week. Uh, but we're exclusive on Facebook and our numbers are just, and everyone can see it for themselves, they just keep expanding. And um, I think it's, I think everyone appreciates it at home that they get to watch the stream for free. Um, so which that's something that we wanted to deliver on for our fans. The fans are a priority and we want to make sure that everyone can see it. Well, let's make sure that we all keep delivering these <laughs> next few days. Emily, thanks very much indeed well, for coming out. Let's get back to the match. Michael and Ted are still the commentators. Yeah, Emily mentioned there the construction of uh, this arena. I came in here on Saturday morning. None of this was here and I just couldn't believe it when I came back in Sunday morning for the start of play. The remarkable effort that had gone into setting up all these tables, all with their own individual lighting and it's got that pool room feel and then in the center of it all this arena setting absolutely magnificent and if this is to be the future of pool and of the us open 
then it's a very promising one. And things looking promising for Mika Imminent, Ted. Yes, he's up 9-7 now. He's won two straight, still at the table. And it looks like Mika has a nice layout here. And he's just going to survey the landscape and get the road map down. Jason Shaw, meanwhile, four straight break and runs here in prime time in Vegas. He is the prime time player of the moment. A master class in nine ball. And it all starts with this shot right here, the break, the most important part of the nine ball game. He's got the one ball down in the side. Well, he's absolutely slipping because would you believe that's the first break off shot in which he hasn't potted at least two balls. Let's see how he handles this. Slightly awkward cueing there. As you can see, the cue ball has come to rest just in front of the nine ball. Interesting result on table 24. Ronald Regley of Switzerland has beaten Fedor Gorst 11-7. So Gorst, the highly rated Russian, is now out. That is a surprise because a lot of people were looking at Fedor Gorst, 18 years old, former world junior champion, yeah. to, to go far, to at least get in the last 16. But no. Ronald Regley, a very good player from Switzerland. And yeah, that was very difficult queuing there. So now we're going to get a first chance to see Corey Duell. It's about 15 minutes now. Corey's been in his chair. So after 37 balls in a row, Shaw finally misses one. He only turned 30 last September, Jason Shaw, so he could have many more years at the top, and the way he's been the last three or four years, that could mean a lot more success to come for him. He's won about half a million dollars in the last five years or so. <laughs> in the world of pool, that is not easy. No, absolutely. Very few people can pull that off. And I think the key has been he's excelled in Real major events with big first prizes. Obviously, he won this one last time out, but he also won the Kuwait nine ball open. That was actually his biggest check to date, 50,000 for that. $50,000, that is, which is also the first prize here at the US Open this week. So finally, Corey Jewell pots a ball for the first time in this match. I don't know if he can see the whole three there, although he doesn't uh, seem to be too worried about it. So maybe down at his angle he can see it yeah it looks like yeah, the way he's getting down on it he can see that oh that's a beautiful stroke there oh and he ended up with position very well done Corey Jewell 41 years of age now he won this US Open very early on in his career 2001 He's uh, been doing okay this year, been second in a number of smaller events. Just over a year ago, he was a winner at the Derby City Classic, nine ball banks division. Real student of the game. You can ask him any question you want about the break shot. He has studied everything there is to, to learn about the break. And many people say that he pioneered the, the soft break, which he's not exactly popular for. 
that soft break, you know, where you just sort of give it a touch, the cue ball, and it just spreads the ball out enough to make one ball and and uh, get a predictable spread on everything else. And uh, that's the one thing that a lot of promoters, including Matchroom, have tried to uh, avoid doing everything they can to make sure that players don't use the soft break. I can tell you one question about the break off shot he wouldn't like, which would be how many dry breaks has Jason Shaw had <laughs> in the five uh, times he's broken off? And the answer is none. So bad position on the <coughs> previous shot has led to this. Five nine is on. Look at this. You may get it. Oh. Well, that was lucky. And he didn't even offer up a hand in apology. But why should he? That's part of the rules. As long as you hit the object ball first. Now you see Shane Van Boning in the audience. Well, maybe he's looking at the man who's the biggest obstacle to him winning that unprecedented sixth U.S. Open this week. Shane Van Boning will be playing the Philippines. Uh, Johan Chua, good young player who's really peaking at the right time. Well, a bit of good fortune helping him on the way there. Not as straightforward as the previous racks, but it's still the same outcome at the end of it. And Jason Shaw is really pulling away. He's 5-0 up now on Corey Jewell in no time at all. Look at this. Alex Montpellier battling back against Mika Imminen. Now down 9-8, to eight, but Mika is at the table. We saw Kevin Chang on the match table earlier against Rodney Morris. He's uh, back in action now, and he's 10-1 up against Jason Theron. So it looks like he's going through to the fifth round on the loser's side. Marek Kudlik also on the hill. Polish player leads Danny Olsen, 10-7. And Shaw 5 0 up uh, on the winner's side, but Petri Makonen of Finland is also off to a flying start. He leads Toru Kurabayashi of Japan by four racks to nil. There's a guy you should keep your eye on. That's uh, Mika's compatriot, good buddy, Petri Makonen. Used to be known as Mika Eminen's doubles partner <laughs> in the World Cup of Pool. He still plays as Mika's doubles partner, but uh, he has carved out his own niche in the last two years. Petri has been traveling the world, playing in all the big events and Euro Tour and doing a lot of uh, practice. And he has really raised the level of his game and started to produce some very impressive results. I would not be surprised at all to see Petri Makinen in the final 16. Well, he said he's had some impressive results. He had one earlier today against Justin Bergman. Beat him 11-5. So the two ball is down. And he'll be looking to take this one in the side. What's this cue ball travel? The way he negotiates those uh, that traffic there. Got to wonder at what point does Jewel start getting to the stage where he isn't thinking about winning the match anymore. He's just thinking about not being whitewashed. It's a very real possibility the way Shaw's playing. We know Jewel is a very good experienced player, but not a great deal you can do about it if Shaw keeps going in this vein. And this being a winner side match, Corey knows even if he goes down to defeat, he will have another chance here at the U.S. Open. Well, Jason's going to have to fall apart in order for Corey to come back in this match. But 
No sign of that right now. This is just where Jason likes to be. It's uh, prime time. It's the TV table. It's the U.S. Open. He is the defending champion. Good luck. I don't think Corey's going to do it. Of course, anything can happen in a winner breaks format, but, but Jason is just a machine. Bustamante looking to finish things off against Jeremy Jones. He's on the hill, 10-8. A couple of balls away from victory. Well, Filipino fans are going to be loving this. Sure, they root for any and all Filipinos, but to see a legend like Django Bustamante still in it at the U.S. Open, that will get us a lot more viewers from the Philippines. And he'll now play Ronald Regley. We were talking about just a few minutes ago. Back here, business as usual. And that's 6 0. And Duel has only even got to the table in one of those six. No, folks, nine ball is not that easy. He's just making it look easy. Well, that's the object of it, isn't it? You know, you play good positional shots, you make it easy for yourself, but it's hard to make it easy for yourself, if you know what I mean. And the key, and we keep going back to this, and uh, if you're new to the game, it's all about that break shot. If you have got the break shot down in which you're making one or two balls and you're able to get a shot on the object ball, you've just increased your chances of winning that rack a hundredfold. That is uh, why you always see players practicing that break. Shane Van Boning is a real student of the break. You'll see Shane practicing the break shot for hours and hours. He doesn't even bother shooting balls sometimes. He just breaks and then re-racks him and breaks again. So here's Mika Eminen with a chance to close it out. The two-time champion closing in on victory there. The one-time and reigning champion. Already more than halfway to winning his match. Well, so there's a ball down. been around the game a long time Ted I know this one isn't over yet but can you think of many performances you've seen that have been closer to perfection than this you do not see this that often in some events where the the setup is like It can be, you know, certain ways they rack the balls in templates and the one on the spot. It can be repetitive, and you do see a lot of break and runouts in this kind of event. This is a, a master class. There it is, Mika Eminen with another big win on the loser side. He is still alive, the two-time U.S. Open champion and Hall of Famer. And at the moment, his likely opponent is Roman Heubler of the Czech Republic, who's 7-4 up on Hunter Lombardo. Who, of course, uh, gave Jason Shaw a decent match earlier today before going down 11-7. Of 
Corey Jewell can only dream of something like that in this match. This is a shot across the bow. This is a warning to everyone out there that Jason Shaw has come here to defend his title. It's a break and run out. Of course it's a break and run out. That's what Jason Shaw is doing in this match. And this is just a fantastic performance. And you know, the thing is, everyone's just been talking so much about the way Shaw's been playing even before this, but he wasn't playing as well as this in his previous matches. So how much are people going to be talking about him now as a contender for another US Open on the back of this performance? Now we're going to hear from Alvin Oshan. Uh, not quite yet. We are going to hear from him right now. In a tough final match of the day, are you happy with your performance? Uh, looks like I'm playing better and better uh, the later it is. Um, I was, I played actually not really good in the morning at 9 a.m. and now we got like 10 hours later and I uh, played my best match in the whole tournament. So, um, but I'm happy that it's over for today, but 9 a.m. tomorrow morning again. It was six all, what changed to enable you to finish out? I actually um, had to play a lot of safeties, which uh, killed him. He didn't make a shot anymore, on, and then he was actually gone. He had ball in hand, but he had no stroke anymore. So um, I knew I got him. Uh, four matches tomorrow to reach the single elimination. Is that the goal right now? Well, it's a tough question. Um, I just want to think from match to match. I mean, uh, race to 11, I can win against everyone. I can lose against many players. So, um, of course, it's, uh, it's like a coin flip because four matches in a row is, is incredible. And will you prepare any differently tonight? I think I will have a beer for sure or two to sleep better because the jet lag got me really hard. Um, didn't sleep much in the last uh, night, so uh, I will have one or two beers. Well played today and good luck tomorrow. Thanks. Cheers. Yeah, Alban Oshan after his win over Konrad Yusushin. Now plays Eric Hjorleifsson of Canada, the man who ended Earl Strickland's US Open earlier today with an 11-10 win. Push out cold. Well, he's got one off the break this time, but uh, having to resort to the push out on this occasion, generally through the match, he's had an open shot <coughs> after potting one off the break. Or after potting two or even three off the break, as has been the case. Good answer from Corey. Jason's going to go get Shorty. He may actually go for the bank here. A jump. Bank? Extension. Extension call. Why not when you're up 7 0? I think if he does that, Corey Jewell might just pick up his Q and case and walk off. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> Is there nothing he can't do? With position on the blue, too. <laughs> There's nothing Jewel can do about it, as we're saying. Not to any great extent anyway, when Shaw's in this kind of form, but even when Shaw is finding himself in a bit of difficulty, he's finding his way out of it. Just total control of the situation. Just to wrap up on Kevin Cheng, he has now closed out that 11-1 win over Jason Theron. That's uh, still on the loser's side, of course. And Petri Makinen now 5-1 up against Toru Kurabayashi. Francisco Sanchez Ruiz, another big name. He started well. 3-0, he leads Mateus Sniagotzi. The, the young Spaniard Ruiz due for some big success. Sooner or later, will come to him. Good player. 
Good guy. So as Jason Shaw goes 8-0 up, let's go to Tom, who's talking to uh, Mika Imanen, who we saw winning just a few moments ago. Yeah, while Jason Shaw is going very, very well there, we've got Mika Imanen, who has just beaten Alex Montpellier 11-8. Mika Imanen, of course, the 2000 of the US Open. Congratulations. Another you. win for you. Now, you've done it before, 2009. Yeah. You're on the loser's side, you went on to win. That's Everyone right. here, when we're talking about the loser's side, always mentions your name to say that it's doable. But how hard is it? Oh, it's very hard. You have to be in great condition. You have to have a little bit of luck. You have to have mental st stamina. And, uh, you know, just have to play great because especially this field is full of, like, champions, one after the other. So uh, I'm just relieved to be done, done for the day and still in. Well, I'm just looking at the list of, of people you've played. For Ralph Eckhart, you've beat. Now, your, your loss was against Su Kai Lun. You beat Roberto yeah. Gomez 11-9. Uh, you were 7-2 down in that game, yeah. in that match as well. Costas, uh, Kokiatis you beat, and now just Alex Montpellier. And you've still got more to go. It's so difficult to win this tournament. It's very difficult, but it's, uh, you know, at the same time, it's... Uh, whoever wins here is going to be the undisputed, uh, not... Not a world championship, but it might be the toughest tournament ever presented because of the, the quality of the field and the depth of the field, and everybody uh, everybody's here. Well, how do you feel about your form at the moment? Are, are you feeling like you're back in that form of 2009? I was catching some of the gear today, and uh, I put a couple of packages together. I finished uh, against the Greek guy. I, I ran uh, one plus five. I, cleared like the broken run the last five so he never had a shot after he was up six five so i think that was a good finish for me and then the, this last match was a bit of a grind and um i was struggling on the break a little bit but then in the end in the end i, I found it and uh was able to close him out but uh I'm, I'm just really happy about being in after being down against gomez because that was the that was the grinder you know and uh and now tomorrow is it's a new day, and then I'm going to get a good night's sleep. Yeah, you'll be back tomorrow. You deserve that good night's sleep. Let's get back to this game going on now. Jason Shaw yeah. against Corey Jewell. Jason's on fire. Yeah, he absolutely is. I mean, how's he looking so far to you and the rest of the players? Well, you know, he's he's smooth. He's uh, He's been smooth for, like, two years already, and this is just his uh, typical form here. I mean, to, uh, to beat Jason, you have to be... Uh, up and breaking and you have to put a bunch of packages you have to put a bunch of racks together because you, you're not going to beat him by running one or two you have to run three or four yeah. to uh, just make a difference and put some heat on him well he's, he's about to go he's, he's got zero heat nine now. Up. He's a, <laughs> what's it like for Corey Jewell in this situation because Corey Jewell is an excellent player he was superb yesterday and he's sitting there thinking I can't get near him this is the brutality of this sport because you could be playing the best you ever did and then uh, if you meet a guy like Jason who's on fire you never really get the chance to show your form so it's it's uh, not like equal opportunity exactly is it it's not like golf everybody gets a no, it's, drive. It's like when people liken it to, I mean like like tennis you serve the other person yeah. serves darts yeah. you go up to the hockey you alternate yeah. but in this with with winner breaks well, winner it's breaks. that momentum so important momentum's important and uh, you have to have a, a guy like Jason make some error to even have a chance like it looks like he's going to run all the way through um, but still um, I do like winter break because it does give a chance to, even if, if you're know, down like I was today against Gomez it gives you a better chance of uh, you know still being in the match without uh, trusting that you have to get lucky yeah, just uh, well, you're going to face either. Other, you have to. You don't have to look, trust for the other guy to get unlucky on his break, so yeah. to speak. Yeah, well, you're facing the winner of either Roman Piper or Hunter Lombardi. We wish you best of luck for that one, and well done today. Let's get yeah, back to you, the Tom. commentators for this game with Jason Shaw. It is uh, Michael McMullen and Ted Lerner. Mika could play James Bond, don't you think? He's got that look about him and that sort of calm, cool demeanour. <laughs> 
It's always good to hear from him. And while he was talking there, Jason Shaw potted three balls off the break, second time he's done that in the match. And inevitably, he ran out from there, 9-0. This is an, a total master class in nine ball. And look at this, it will continue. He's got an open shot on the one, I mean, rather the two, two balls down. And you heard Mika say it right there, the, the really the only way to beat Jason Shaw, well, you gotta hope for one, he comes out flat, which we haven't seen that too much recently in his game. Or if he's playing like this, you've got to take the one or two chances you get at the table and put some heat on him by putting three, four, five racks together. That's what Mika was referring to when he said packages. And that's what players call when they put uh, string the racks together. Just continuing the finish theme. Petri Makunin is now 5-2 up against Toru Kurabayashi. If he gets through, he will have the privilege of facing Jason Shaw in the next round. Assuming, of course, Shaw closes this out, but I think we're fairly safe making that assumption now. This is about to go 10-0. Can you imagine, Michael, somebody tuning in for the first time and has never seen nine ball, they think, wow, this is, what an easy game this yeah, is. Yeah, I know. It's just like we were saying, that's what it's about at this level, making it easy for yourself. But it takes years and years of practice to get to the point where you can do that. And you, you don't often see players steamrolling through a match in this manner. Well, certainly not against someone like Corey Jewell. But then again, it almost wouldn't matter who Shaw was playing in this. He's just been so dominant, so imperious. What is that now? 10 nil, nine break and runs? I think that was eight, eight breaking it's, runs. Yeah, I think it's eight, yeah, I think it's eight. Wow. Impressive. The eighth rack wasn't a break and run out, and uh, I think the fifth wasn't. But other than that, he's been very consistent in going straight from the break to the winning line, and now he's on the brink of the winning line in this match. It looks as though Jewel is heading for the loser's side. We'll be back tomorrow. Day three, the final day of the double elimination phase. And it will be once again wall to wall coverage all for free. Right here on the US Open Nine Ball Championship Facebook page. I hope you're enjoying the coverage. Would he like to avert the whitewash from here if he gets the chance, Jewel? Or is it a case that he's just probably not bothered and wants to get out of there now? He's just been so nah, disillusioned I, with the way this has gone. Yeah, I, Corey's been around long enough. It's, it's a write-off already. It's just time to get over to the other side of the bucket and see if he can uh, make some noise from over there. So yet again, he's got one down. The two almost went in the middle, seemed to come off both jaws. Yeah, he's looking to see if that two passes the five. Oh, well, that could not be more in contrast with what we have been watching for the last three quarters of an hour or so. He's played some of the finest nine ball we've ever seen over the course of a match. And then he does something that makes him look like someone who's never played before. Now this is Corey's chance to take the goose egg off the scoreboard. 
Shaw's already had one whitewash win in this tournament against Marcus Weston of Germany yesterday morning. He looked to be heading for another one, but I think you would suggest Duel, a very clear favourite to win this rack now. They're all out in the open. And no real pressure on him at this stage. As you were saying, the match is a write-off for him now, Ted. Probably going to see more of him in this rack than we have in the whole match up until now. <laughs> at least Corey will get some table time. Yeah, he actually has... Uh, Played on the main table already in this tournament yesterday against Martin Daig from Canada. Beat him I don't know about you, Ted, but I don't like seeing anyone getting whitewashed and having that little bit of humiliation, and I don't think we're going to see it here now. Hoping Yi going well. 5-2 up on Evo Arts. Torsten Holman has also made a good start. He's leading 3-0 against Ko Ping Chung. Well, I hope you're listening, pool fans. These are... Some of the biggest names in pool. There you go. I think a little bit of irony about that raising yeah. his hand in uh, celebration. <laughs> well, what can you do when you've been blown away like this? You've got to have a bit of humor about it. So no whitewash. Well, Jason's up at the table pulling balls out. I, I don't know if he thinks he's breaking, but it's a Corey's going to be breaking. He's so used to... Uh, doing that after the rack is complete, but it'll be Corey's break, winner break format. All he's got to do is win 10 straight. Well, Jason Shaw did it. Why not Corey Duell? I hope Corey can remember how to hit a break off shot. He hasn't had one in this match so far. Jason Shaw almost looks furious with himself for not uh, completing the 11-0. This U.S. Open nine ball is shaping up to be just an incredible conclusion because as you go through the names, Michael, we're hearing names from the past like Bustamante, Imanen. We're hearing the new names, you know, Jason Shaw, uh, Johan Chua. I mean, there are so many great talents coming through, talents from the past. This is going to be... So exciting for pool fans. Well, Chua, who you mentioned there, he's going to get his chance on the main table, it seems, because uh, with this match heading for a very swift finish, his match against Shane Van Boning has been moved on to the main table. Yeah, we've got the stars of the present. Jason Shaw, Shane Van Boning. They're all here. It just doesn't get any better than this for pool fans. So a ball down for Corey Duell. Oh, that's a good shot there. Look at that. Nicely done off the rail. Negotiates the traffic. Leaves himself a nice shot. You know, the thing about being in this position that Corey finds himself in, this is what you call freewheeling time for a pool player. He is dead and buried, as far as this match goes. So he can play loose. And he can play it like a practice session. For Jason Shaw, that's what it's effectively been up until now. Joshua Filler, world champion. 4-0 down against Su Kai Lun. Well, Su Kai Lun is a great young Taiwanese player. But, uh, I expect Joshua to make a fight back. 
Joshua is certainly one of the favorites here. Mm -hmm. World nine ball champion, number yeah. one in the WPA rankings. Yeah, you mentioned names from the past. Darren Appleton probably falls into that category. He's in action at the moment as well. 3 0 down, though, against Wu Xing in this winner's round. Oh. oh, he's fouled. He fouled. And the match. And that's the end of the match. Well, after everything that we saw leading up to that, what a bizarre way for it to finish. Because this Scott has got the lot. Rock solid breaking, clinical run outs. He even potted a bank shot with the jump cue. And in the end, Jason Shaw is the winner over Corey Jewell with a slightly anticlimactic finish. He wins by 11 racks to one.